All right, everybody, welcome. My name is Kirsten Winkler of KirstenWinkler.com, and today I got questions for Janni Pentinen. He is the founder and CEO of CH Limited, and uh, today we talk about one of his um, uprising projects, uh, which is called Premium Fan Page. So, Janni, welcome to questions. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Many people um, who are uh, in our audience will probably remember that we did uh, an EduQuest some months ago about actually the original, um, not original project, project, but maybe the feedback on um, CHA Life, your your social social network um, for people who want to learn and. Uh, converse in foreign languages um, was sort of uh, an initial point to going further and uh, beyond and going into this new uh, project of, free, uh, of premium fan page. And can you just tell us a little bit how you made the transition, what was the feedback on CHA Live and um, how did it come about that you said mm, in premium fan page uh, there might be some great business opportunity? Uh, yeah, so, well, you know, we've been running CHA for like three, three and a half years and, and it's always been a consumer service, mm -hmm. so uh, we we never really catered for businesses, but every time we released something, we got uh, requests uh, from other companies uh, asking, "Hey, could you mm -hmm. uh, could you do this on our website? You know, our our company needs this type of service." And we always had to say no. But um, uh, last year, it kind of started to become um, kind of obvious to us that the demand is there, mm -hmm. and um, the time seems to be right for that. So mm -hmm. we. We first, we, we did a little project where we sponsored this project called uh, Traveling Salesman by mm -hmm. providing them a community website. It was not meant to be a separate thing, but then it kind of, you know, we did that. After that, we, um, we, we got approached by Rovio asking if we could do something for Angry Birds. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, really exciting. So, yeah. so we decided we did that as well. And while working on that, we realized that, hey, maybe we could just, you know, build a product where... Uh, next time someone asks for it, we, we'll have it ready. We don't need to, you know, start from scratch. So hmm. we built it the way where we can easily make another one. And you know, it, it's it's kind of process that started from demand. We didn't really think of of going so far into it. Mm -hmm. But uh, after we we did a few things, the more companies were interested in that. And you know, before we noticed, uh, we're just full time working on that, and it's mm -hmm. actually generating nice revenue. So sort of accidentally, but um, I'm very happy that... But happily, yeah, I wanted to say uh, that. <laughs> you know, this gives us an opportunity to work on a, a very wide array of uh, exciting projects, uh, working with a lot of companies that are doing very cool things, and mm -hmm. you know, we get to be part of that in a small way, but meaningful way, and um, we are, well, fortunately, able to, to have a good business model in that as well, so it makes us a good business sense to spend time and effort in improving that side. I would uh, I would say that's uh, just sometimes how how life comes in and uh, I mean with with Siha of course you put the product um, out there and uh, it's not that uh, it didn't have a customer response um, but Sometimes, uh, as soon as the product is out there, you you realize that customers uh, use it in a certain way, or they wish they had other um, additions to it, and so that's just how yeah you you sometimes find out that the real business opportunity is then maybe not on the uh, consumer side but more on the business side who are uh, willing to to invest in or in, invest significantly more in such a service and that's yeah. great that's that's definitely true i mean what um 
what is kind of fortunate for us is that we had already built the Seha platform, mm -hmm. so it, it only took us uh, like a month to make the transition to the business side because yeah. um, we already have a, a fully functional social media platform that supports languages and has the translation features, so we didn't actually have to start from scratch and we didn't have to build the tech. Um, we did have to make some adjustments and improvements, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, so one thing led to another, and Siha still exists and it's living its own life, um, so we, ha we do have the two sides, but right now the focus is, uh, the, the development focus is on the business side, because that seems to be much more active and full of uh, new opportunities for us. Absolutely. And uh, can you tell our audience uh, a little bit more what premium fan page actually does? And uh, if uh, I have a business, why do I uh, might want that? Yeah, so it, it's actually, what it does, it, it's very simple. It, it translates uh, social media content. Mm -hmm. So. As as a as a one one way is is we could do a destination website, which is you know a fan site that integrates your social media feeds, and then visitors from different countries or different languages will see the content in their own language. And the difference to Siha is that while Siha was using Google Translate for machine translation, uh, premium fan pages actually was a premium offering. Mm -hmm. um, so. All the translations are done by humans, you know, professional translators. So all the text is kind of that that's the most important thing for us. And um, but yet it's, it's still doing it in the same automated fashion. So anytime you update your Twitter feed or you know mm -hmm. blog, our system kicks in, sends the text to a translator. As soon as the translator is done with that, we publish it. So there's minimum delay and there's like zero effort to actually mm -hmm. get things translated after you set up everything. Mm -hmm. So, and um, the other side of the coin is that since you know some companies already have a website that they they don't really care about having the website itself in multilingual, but they they want to have their social media mm -hmm. uh, many languages. We also support just the direct um, a Twitter to Twitter or Facebook to Facebook translations, so that you can. You can be tweeting in English, for example, and then you have another account that is for French. Mm -hmm. And then our system reads your English tweets and sends them over to the French one, you know, professional translated. So, so you it kind of appears as if you are tweeting in French, and people can start following your, uh, your French mm -hmm. tweet, um, the uh, French speakers. So, so you will sort of like you will gather these audiences and people on different accounts. And you will be able to communicate with them directly. So that's um, um, that seems to be the most popular of our products. Yeah, yeah, and I should um, disclose that uh, we were actually having a talk about premium fan page uh, some weeks ago, but due to some technical difficulties on my side, we um, couldn't um, we couldn't record this interview, which is maybe looking back not. Uh, such a bad thing. Um, of course, I took from your time, but let's say you made some experiences and got uh, customer feedback, and uh, so you can probably um, talk from a little bit a different um, standpoint, and we can evaluate That's what your first assumptions, if they were um, right, or um, if then again the market. Um, went a little bit into a different, uh, or for you, right at the beginning, unexpected um, direction. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's definitely true. That's definitely true. That's that's exactly what happened. Is that what I was talking to you? Uh, was it in January, probably January, February? I think so. Um, yeah, we did that at the beginning of the things year. Things have changed a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we started with something, and um, it's it's evolved. Um, uh, we are a very dynamic organization, so we actually don't build things until somebody needs it. So, mm -hmm. so we have a product, and when, when a customer comes in and asks for something that we don't yet have, we'll build it. But we don't build it beforehand. So that gives us the chance to steer all the time based on the need. And mm -hmm. um, we've gone from purely a fan page product that was meant to be sort of like a Facebook fan page in multiple languages 
that was the original idea, and now it came to, to be like um, more more of a pure social media translation service. We and actually, as you mentioned, we don't do the translation by ourselves. We uh, we employ uh, networks of translate translators. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we are sort of a, you know an, an aggregator, facilitator, how you want to call it, where we do the work. We there's a lot of uh, tedious work in uh, anytime you want to translate something, you have to find a translator, you have to send the text, you have to you know help them out with you know, the, the 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 context, and then you can test that. You have to publish that. That's that's usually so much um, manual work that a lot of people just don't want to do it. And we take care of all of that. So once you are using our service, you just keep um, sending your messages, and no, you will know that anything you do will be available in all these mm. languages. You don't have to worry about. You don't need to even worry about whether the quality is good because we do our own internal quality uh, assurance. So um, you can just uh, have a peace of mind and keep keep doing what you what you actually should be doing. You know, focusing on real work. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's great to hear that the service is accepted like um, like that and really has this uh, response uh, rate from from the businesses. I remember back then you were actually um, thinking or playing with the idea if maybe the machine translation would be um, just due to its cut in cost the popular option. And maybe just for special cases, the human translation. Now, apparently, being in the business, it shows that many of your customers prefer actually the professional uh, human translation. Of course, timely, timely human translation. Um, can you tell us a little bit um, why or what do they tell you? Because um, I suppose it costs an X factor more than the um, than the machine translation. But uh, why do businesses tend to still prefer and have their tweets or um, their text translated by a human? Uh, yeah, that's that's something we I, I did misestimate at first. I thought you know businesses would actually be interested in the machine translation, and, and it turns out that none of our customers wants to have any machine translated content wow. on their website. <laughs> wow! Wow! Um, where they do use it is um, on a customer service tool that we also provide, where mm -hmm. um, a customer sends them a message. They use uh, the machine translator to first read it over, mm -hmm. uh, so their customer support team can understand the messages, and then they will reply using a professional translator. Because mm. uh, Google translation, it's actually really good in in uh, making you understand the message. So, so so you do know what the customer tells you, you know, no matter what the language is. But uh, when you have a company and you want to broadcast a message, mm -hmm. uh, turns out, and it, it totally makes sense. Um, all the businesses are very um, picky. companies are very picky about the quality because um, you know they, they might have already spent like ten dollars to um, mm -hmm. for someone to create a tweet, mm -hmm. or you know a hundred dollars to to, uh, to create a blog post, or even if they you know if they buy it from outside, or or even if their employee was writing it, it, it probably did cost a lot more than the translated version. So um, it, it's not actually for them a big cost comparing what it cost to to, to, to create the content originally. Mm -hmm. And if they just uh, use a machine to translate it and blast it out, it's sort of really wasted effort because it will make them look bad. So um, it, it turns out that anyone who is actually doing uh, marketing on the internet is already spending money and being able to replicate that in other languages by paying a little more, but relatively speaking, not that much, is actually the way they want to do it. You know. Mm. So, uh, and that's obviously because you know we've been a consumer company for so long, we didn't really realize that we consumers never want to pay for anything. It's so, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You and I, we go online. We don't want to pay for something. We want to get it for free. 
because that's what we are trying to it's do. Possible, so yes. business, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When businesses. It's possible, yes. Yeah. And businesses communicate, they, they communicate in order to make more money, so it's mm -hmm. actually an investment. So, um, yeah, that was my mistake, but fortunately, you know, we, we, we learned uh, from our customers really quickly, and we dropped, uh, you know, we changed things around, and now what we're doing is we are just mostly focused on offering the translation service, because um, that seems to be the convenience of being able to have all your content all the time up to date and translated. Uh, is a big sale for us. You know, a lot of people are very excited about this aspect. Mm -hmm. um, um, when we talk, when I talk to, to potential customers, um, pretty much everybody admits that yes, they would like. They, they've been thinking of it would be cool to have their content available in, uh, in other languages, mm -hmm. but the amount of work it takes to translate that, and then the even more tedious work of actually up. Any time you make changes or post something new, it's just keeping them away for it. Because the last thing you want to do is translate your website to five languages, and then next time you post an update, you realize that there's just, uh, the same work that you have to do to get the updates updates up there. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. It gets very tedious, and uh, and sometimes I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then you realize that. You cannot update your website anymore because you would have to update the translations. Mm -hmm, and absolutely. That, that's something that scares people a lot, and for a reason. So when when I go talk, you know, these days I mostly talk about this this translation part because that is really what is very interesting to companies. Um, the global market these days means that when you have built a product, if you are able to just get the product for sale in other countries at the same time, other markets, you make more money. You know, it's, it's, there are no reasons for you to not, not put it there because it's very easy to sell. Uh, it, it's not like it used to be in the, in the early days where it was really difficult to sell something in another country. You'd have to mail it and you'd have to worry about the payments. All of those are gone when the products are electronic and uh, and you know the the payment uh, systems are global, so now yeah, if, if you can start getting your marketing message out there in other languages, it means more money for you, and that's exactly what uh, everybody's out there, uh, you know, uh, looking for. Oh, absolutely. Um, I entirely agree. I think um, on on the one hand, of course, for, for businesses, this internationalization and uh, just the new opportunities coming with um, social media, but internet in general, of course. And on the other hand, also um, being in the translation business, and um, now having potentially customers uh, all around the world, of course, if you can translate from or into uh, their language, it's uh, a great uh, opportunity for this whole uh, vertical um, of, of the market. And uh, so you said um, you're not really having um, the translators yourself. Um, but you have, of course, uh, insurance um, of, or, or you make sure the, the quality. Um, where are these uh, translators then located? Um, so, as we said, they can translate, or they do translate very, very uh, quickly. And um, how do you choose them? How do you find them? Uh, yeah, so we use uh, networks of uh, mm -hmm. the, it's crowdsourced networks of mm -hmm. uh, professional translators. Our main partner is um, a Japanese company called My Jingo, um, or My Jingo. I don't know how you how you say that, but um, they are um, they're really good at what, what they uh, what they do. They they, they check the. Um, they, they make sure that anyone who says is a professional translator is actually a professional, mm -hmm. and um, um, they, they they do also provide translations by you know native speakers, hobbyists. But mm -hmm. uh, at least for now, um, all our customers are interested in quality, and um, they're willing to pay extra for that. So we're not even offering the the native speaker. We only offer the. Um, the professional translation uh, translators, maybe later, 
if, if someone is interested in, in in the native speakers, maybe if they have some you know, type of text that is not so serious, then we could consider using also the other option, mm -hmm. uh, which is some somewhat cheaper, but then there there is no guarantee that uh, mm. the text is fully correct. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, right right now, I mean, we, we do like the, the way they they operate and. We have some other partners as well, and we are looking for more. There are several providers right now out there who um, currently in all our networks, we have about 15,000 translators. Wow. Like mm -hmm. covering um, 54 different languages or something mm -hmm. like that. Wow. So uh, I say something like that because the, 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 that number seems to be going up on almost weekly <laughs> when these networks grow and they find more. Um, speakers of more languages which is really nice um, it's, um, it, it's it's nice to be able to offer uh, translation on almost any widely used language on the internet and yeah still that's have awesome customer. yeah on the customer side um, let's let's give us some um, some things to to relate to so um, let's say I had a company and I um, have to address a marketing message and on the other hand I tweet and um, so let's say from French into Spanish so something probably something very easy or, or let's say Spanish or Portuguese for South America um, in what time could I expect my uh, my message or my tweet to to appear in the other language there are there's one thing that kind of affects it is the time of day. Mm -hmm. So if you if you need a translate translation from from French, then mostly the translators are in, in the French speaking countries. Then, mm -hmm. um, so then we will have to you know we'll send the request immediately, and there is a chance somebody will pick it up immediately. And if that's the case, your tweet will come back in about twenty minutes to half an hour. The blog would be back in about maybe two hours. Mm -hmm. So right. we're talking fairly short period of time. Like yeah. One to two hours is when you can expect it back. However, if um, French has better coverage, but let's say you know, I, I wanted, uh, I chose it because of uh, the coverage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if if you have finished, then there is very likely that there will only be translators in the country of Finland. Mm -hmm. And so when it's a night time in Finland, you will not get yeah. the translation until the morning. Of but course, then again yeah. your audience will be sleeping at the same time so you know it's 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 sort of not a not that big of a problem mm -hmm. um, especially if you're transla translating to Finnish. Yeah, and, that's um, true. The other way to do it is um, you can uh, pre-schedule your tweets and your blogs so you know some of our customers do that. They, they, they write uh, the tweets for the whole week beforehand we translate them, stored in a database, and then time it over the week. Mm -hmm. So then uh, the original and the translated versions are published at the same time. Mm -hmm. And from, so, yeah, um, I see. So that's that's really, that's really, really good. I mean, um, pre-scheduling, I think, is uh, very convenient for companies so that they can plan and they, they can announce um, at a certain day and time. But also then having your blog post translated um, in in a few hours or the next morning I think is uh, is, is very a very compelling argument for for most uh, most businesses and from the price point uh, I mean I read on your site that uh, if you have your own uh, website it starts at 49 euros a month, I think, although I cannot imagine that this is really the human translation. And if you want the design package, that is, of course, uh, more expensive, and uh, I think you can find 250 euros a month. But um, tell us more about the business model. Yeah, so, so um, well, it's 40, $49 or 35 mm, okay. euros. That's for hosting. If you need for mm -hmm. us to host the site on our multilingual platform, where mm -hmm. you know we take care of the, the languages, mm -hmm. so that's the hosting fee. But then translations are charged separately. Mm -hmm. um, 
in case of tweets, um, uh, the, the price starts from two dollars uh, per tweet, translated mm -hmm. to another language, which is you know about one one half euros. Um, then it goes down um, if, if if you tweet more or of translate course. more, then then we give you a volume discount. Mm -hmm. uh, for uh, for blogs and other you know varying size uh, text content, we we charge by word, mm -hmm. which is common in the translation industry. Absolutely. And um, that's um, the starting point. There is uh, fourteen cents euro cents per mm -hmm. word. Mm -hmm. That's about twenty. Twenty dollars cents per word, okay. which is um, cheaper than if you would go to a traditional translation agency because we don't have the overhead of having an, an office and having somebody to manually check over the work. It's all automated, so we're it's all within, you know, basically the cost comes from the translation itself. Mm -hmm. I said in the introduction that premium fan page is sort of a rising star in the um, translation or online translation business, and um, I mean, kind of <laughs> I mean it's true. And uh, of course, I think uh, it helped that uh, you had a really good partner with uh, Rolo, so. Uh, um, translating the Angry Birds fan page or fan conversations um, and engagement um, like right at your at your launch date and uh, since then you you have attracted many more uh, interesting partners so I suppose um, that premium fan page can um, unfold its um, it, it, its greatest uh, assets and uh, do the best for a business is um, that I as a business uh, need a certain either international fan base or uh, have regular customer relations. Um, so tell us a little bit, um, we have Angry Birds, I think everybody can associate something with it. What are other businesses who found it particularly interesting um, to have this um, automated but human uh, translation, professional translation for their sites or tweets or blog posts? Yeah, we have a number um, right now. That the thing is, most of them are sort of under the wraps. They are mm -hmm. waiting to to publish, so they don't want us to about them until they are ready to go live because this usually is aligned with either a product launch or um, a website redesign launch you know mm -hmm. everybody's um, um, usually it will turn out that uh, people you know companies don't really want to just flip over their website more languages they want to tie it together with with a greater thing happening you know launching a new product or just you know we're doing something, and um, so they they kind of let us do the work, but then they are sitting on it, waiting for the opportunity, which is mm. sort of frustrating for us. But have to remember that we are just a few months old, mm. so we, it, it's it's a short period of time. Yeah. But well, no, I I wanted to say I can totally understand. Maybe we have some sort of market, so we have the game market, and naturally you have a lot of fans. Maybe I could imagine something in video as well, sort of. Yeah, we have uh, we have a few other game devs, and then we have some um, celebrities, mm -hmm. and um, the, uh, um, we actually have companies pretty much from all the, the different areas. Oh, it's it's quite interesting how this seems to feel. Um, we have one um, amusement park mm -hmm. that we do in marketing messaging. Great. But they not very really long in the middle of the season because the guys have you know, started, so they you know they looking for the next season and yeah. Um, we yeah, so, so so you know we actually have been just about everybody I talk to about this call their conference or you know whatever business meetings. I just you know mention what we do, and you know it's about thirty percent chance that those people will become our customers. It's, it's that's really story. high. That's amazing. Oh, oh, that congratulations! It seems to be, it, 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 this seems to be a, a lot bigger um, than we ever thought. 
possible. So, so you know, it's um, uh, the appeal. Even though you know you might see also how many companies out there are currently translating stuff, uh, but that would be misleading because um, they are not doing it because it's it's not easy. Mm. But when we go and give them the opportunity to actually do it, and it's very reasonably priced and it's um, super easy, then um, a lot of companies are actually willing to to do it because they they see the opportunity for them. You really found um, a sweet spot there. That's great. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we'll see that mm -hmm. way. Yes. Yeah. What is um, mm, so? Of course, uh, during the second half uh, of this year, we will hopefully um, see some of your customers come out with with their product, and um, then we Definitely. can yes. show a little bit can. more. Yeah, how how premium fan page works in in action um, for your own plans as uh, as team um, you mentioned in our little talk before um, an objective is uh, to to move to the states uh, I think um, which is yeah just a huge market and also um, probably to make connections and uh, everything it's uh, an advantage to be over there located over there um, what else are you planning to to roll out, or is it more um, stabilizing everything, making sure that the solution works seamlessly, and not so much concentrating on new features? We are trying to focus on this this product. That's that's very true. But but we are making um, available a few other few ways of of using it um, mm -hmm. easier. So. Um, in about two weeks, uh, yep, yeah, about two weeks we will release um, um, sort of a Twitter tool, which just make lets you go online and do a Twitter connect, enter your credit card, and then you just you're done. You know, y your tweets will start translating to other languages. A very easy to use tool. We'll see how that kind of self-service goes in the business market. So it's sort sort of an experiment for us, but it's um, I, I think it has a big potential. Mm -hmm. And we are we're going to do the same for Facebook a little later, and um, we'll do things like uh, WordPress plugins to let you just uh, translate an entire WordPress post, to, mm -hmm. um, right. mm -hmm. and um, so. But we'll keep the core. You know, the core is is to do this. Just we, the products we do are more for enabling us to even easier start using this this product. Great. And uh, that's pretty much for this year. I mean, we um, we are a small team. We intend to keep it that way. We don't. Mm -hmm. uh, although the, the the things we do is we work with partners. So anytime there's any, we sometimes offer design services for mm -hmm. our customers. The way we do it is we outsource that to um, um, other dis you know, design companies. So we want to just have a very laser sharp focus on, on building the best translation tool possible. Awesome. Um, the website once again is premiumfanpage.com. Um, moreover, you are, um, of course, actively um, tweeting. Uh, what is the um, should should people interested from the audience follow you personally or the the company? What is best, Yanni, to to tweet at? Uh, well, we have a premium fan page Twitter account. Mm -hmm. That's great for anyone interested in um, the news. Uh, we we're planning on doing some special deals there for. Um, we're, we're planning on a, on a, a sort of um, a referral program where anyone who wants to try it out, mm -hmm. want, want to try out the service but is not willing to pay the money or you know is not sure if this is worth it. Well, mm -hmm. You can try it free by inviting a few friends. You get some credit and mm -hmm. you know then we'll. Great, so a little it. incentive. Yeah. yeah. Translate a few a few tweets for free that way. Uh, you can you know you can try it out 
But all those details we'll be announcing on, on the Twitter feed when they come available. It's not available yet, but we'll, we'll be sure. So following that is the best way to stay up to date with uh, what we're doing. Absolutely. So you heard what uh, Yanni um, just said. Um, follow follow the tweets of uh, Premium Fan Page and uh, maybe even get um, a little bit for free as um, an encouragement or a little incentive to um, yeah to to give it a shot and uh, to try it out. I think um, it's really compelling service and um, the whole translation business, the more I am looking in it, um, online translation seems uh, to be um, a very promising field. So um, congratulations to what you have achieved already, continued success, many more customers and uh, exciting months to come, Yanni. Thanks very much. Thank you so much and thank you for um, your patience and doing the interview again. <laughs>